Welcome back to PlaySize Studios, finally, everyone, and apologies for the past week or so of no content. I've been really busy with work, had to uh, travel a little bit, but wanted to make it up to you guys. Uh, so today we're going to be doing a special extended casual type review video. So we're going to be taking a look at not just one, not two, but five whole Jim Dunlap slash MXR pedals, and they all have one thing in common besides that. That is that they are Zach Wild signature pedals. I did acquire a couple of these rather recently. I had some in-store credit to get rid of, and I thought I'd go ahead and round out my collection, um, and that will put me up to basically all of his pedals minus one. You'll see why momentarily. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to test these pedals with exactly the same gear that Zach would be using. I don't have a Les Paul with active pickups, and I definitely don't have a JCM 800 modded with 65. 50 power tubes or, you know, electro voice speaker cabinets, whatever, but should be able to get in the ballpark of his sound. You'll be able to see what all these pedals do. And honestly, we're going to be cranking the gain and uh, crunch so high that it's going to be Zach Wild at the end of the day. Uh, so for those of you that are a fan of his tone like I am, then, you know, I think it'll do justice. So with that, let's just go ahead and get started. As fate would have it, we're going to be taking a look at these pedals, not only in the general layout that they would be on Zach's pedal board, but also in the order that I acquired them, which is kind of funny. So uh, we're going to start off with Zach Wild's signature Crybaby Wah pedal. I got this pedal about a year after I started playing guitar, so I've had this for almost 10 years. Um, I've owned another regular Crybaby Wah pedal, but I soon sold it afterwards. Um, I kind of acquired it, I think, about six months after I got this, but this has been my go-to Wah pedal for everything. Obviously, being the Zach Wild ZW45 version, it nails the Zach Wild Wah pedal sound, which is an integral part of his solo sounds to some people's chagrin. But um, if you're like me, I, I like the way he uses the Wah pedal better than a lot of other Crybaby um, you know, Wah pedal players. But for me, this nails anything I need it to. Uh, when set side by side, this one's a bit throatier, has a little bit more low end. I think the frequency spectrum is a little bit more on the uh, lower end than the stock models. And because of that, I, I, it fits my sound personally. When I think of a wah pedal sound, I think of this. This has always served me really well for any types of um, heavy metal and rock and roll wah pedal stuff. Sounds great clean, sounds great distorted. And uh, this thing's held up rather well. It's a little beat up, but it looks really cool. Matches the uh, Zach Wild aesthetic for sure. You got the customized footprint there. We have a brushed steel chassis and you know, it's, it's minimal, but definitely works. You could beat someone over the head with it. Uh, it weighs, weighs quite a bit and this will take up a lot of space on your pedal board. So be aware of that. Um, but yeah, pretty simple in out nine volt and engage. It'll sound like Zach. So obviously being a wah pedal, this will be one of the first pedals in your signal chain. Some people will debate whether you want it in front of an overdrive or before. This one he uses before. That's the way I always use it. And um, it, like I said, it, it sounds great. And it's been a staple in my own rig for a long time as far as real pedals go. So this one is definitely one of my favorite pedals I've ever owned. And uh, hopefully it'll serve me for another 10 years plus. So I mentioned that I am missing one pedal in this lineup, and that is the Dunlop Rotovibe pedal, which would look very similar to this, except it's got more of a red chassis, kind of has a little kick switch out on the side. And what it is, is more or less a time controllable, pedal controllable chorus effect um, that Zach has always had on his pedal board from about, I'd say a few years after he joined Ozzy from there on up. Uh, you can look at pictures of his classic pedal boards in the earlier days of Black Label Society when he was still using like the Boss Super Overdrive and a regular Crybaby. He was using the regular Rota Vibe pedal. Those things are hard to come by. Um, they're about 175 bucks at the cheapest and I don't really have a use for them personally, which is why I don't have one. The Zach Wild Signature Rota Vibe came out in about, I want to say 2010, 2012. And I was, you know, knee deep in VSTs and digital effects by that point. 
like I said, never use Roto Vibes anyway. But I think they only produce those for less than a year because I, I physically can't find one. <laughs> and for the sake of this video, I probably would have gone out and spent 150 to 200 bucks on it just to have it, but you, you can't find them. Uh, I found one eBay post that has been dead for, you know, a good year and a couple of listing, listings on Reverb that have also been sold out for a long time. So they just don't exist. If you see one, let me know, because I've got them all anyway. I would like to have one eventually, but so um, I can't demonstrate that one. But a lot of the stuff that you hear in its cleans and um, you know, you hear this time modulation flanger-esque effect, you can probably count on being that road of vibe pedal. I don't think he messes with the time very much or you know, changes the position of the pedal um, after he engages it, but it, you know, that does exist. So it would be to the left of this before the overdrives and everything else starts. Fortunately, I can't show you it today. The next pedal we'll be taking a look at is the MXR ZW44 Overdrive. This pedal launched around the same time period as the wah pedal did, uh, but I didn't receive it until about a year or so afterwards. And I was actually gifted this by a cousin who just wasn't playing guitar as much at the time. Uh, gave me this, a couple boss pedals, and um, I, I didn't really use much of them. I think one of them was just a regular distortion pedal that didn't do anything for me. Uh, another one was uh, some type of you know metal zone, or, or I think it was maybe the metal core, whatever it was, that was usable on a solid state Marshall at the time, but not great. Um, but this was the other pedal. And at the time it was like, what do I do with this? Um, because the overdrive channel on the Marshall that you're gonna be hearing, I just couldn't really figure out how to dial it in at the time. But I let it just kind of sit around and I tinkered with it here and there. And I grown to just love this pedal. And that's because it's more or less a tube screamer, a super overdrive type circuit with just a little bit of modification. Um, it has a little bit different frequency response and I really like it. So if you set it to the modern Tube Screamer settings with you know no gain, high output, high tone, you're gonna get a really nice clean crunch, very clear. Um, and for that reason, this is my go-to pedal for a lot of overdriven stuff if I'm playing classic rock or you know my own take on heavy metal slash uh, southern rock. I find this pedal a lot more versatile than something like the Tube Screamer, which in my experience, works really well. Obviously, it's been a you know staple in guitar players' rigs for decades at this point, but depending on how you tweak the output and the gain, you're really just getting different degrees of the same thing of how much output you're getting. With this, depending on where you put the tone, where you put the gain, you can get a smooth, creamy overdrive that you can put in front of a, um, a clean amplifier to get a little bit of leads. Uh, you can crank up the tone and gain to get modern crunch. It works well with everything. I, this is one of my, another one of my staple pedals that uh, I would not trade for anything. I've never used a Boss Super Overdrive before, but I imagine this is basically the same circuit. And they're all Tube Screamer knockoffs at the end of the day with a couple of tweaks. Uh, but because of the versatility of this thing, it has never left my pedal board since. Um, I, even when I was using distortion pedals for the more heavier covers at the time, I still had this for cleans, just a little bit of classic rock overdrive or you know Black Label Society stuff, and I love it even to this day. When I play with my more heavy metal flavored Southern rock stuff, this is what I use. I've tried Tube Screamers, I've tried a couple boutique crazy pedals um, that I borrowed for a time, but nothing nails it like this does in, in this position. So uh, one of my favorites, and as much as I may not like having two signature pedals from the same person be so integral in my personal sound, it just, it works so great. And uh, that's why it's had so much use and why it's so dinged up, but um, great pedal. You can pick these up for about 50 bucks or less used. And even if you do have a Tube Screamer, if you're into that sort of sound, I would recommend having one on hand at some point. 
Pedal number three is the MXR ZW44. When, oh, Berserker Overdrive, totally different product. No, not a rip off whatsoever the last one we just looked at. So this is like one of the first of the second generation of Zach Wild signatures. You know, the wall pedal and the first Overdrive came out within a reasonable time frame, And then we had a few years gap. I guess that Rotovibe came out and these alongside it. So this pedal is more or less just the updated version of this. There's not a whole lot of difference. We have the same exact controls, a uh, little bit of updated graphics, but for the most part, they're gonna do the exact same thing in your signal chain. There is a little bit of tonality difference, but for the most part, they're gonna get you in the same ballpark. For my personal stuff, I would still go with this, but if you're nitpicking down to the minute details, I would say this is gonna get you closer to the Zach Wild sound. If you had to choose one of them, I, I would say go with the newer one if you can find it. Um, the construction and the graphics on it I think is, is cooler, but they're gonna get you to the same ends. This thing costs 50 bucks, 40 to 50. This thing costs 50 to 80, depending on how good of a condition. Um, it, you know, it's kind of beat up out of the box, supposed to look that way, and has a bit more of a, a consistent art style going on with the wah pedals and that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, they're basically the same pedal. I've uh, never compared the PCB or anything because I've not had to take these apart, but again, I would imagine there's just some very minute adjustments that after playing with this pedal for several years, Zach said, yeah, I'd like a little bit more of this type of sound. I definitely didn't buy both of these to use on the same pedal board at the same time. That'd be a little ridiculous. Um, Zach only uses this one now, obviously. Um, but I wanted to have the Wild Overdrive free in case I wanted to use it for personal stuff and still have something that is Zach Wild signature to use on the other stuff altogether. So maybe there, there'll be a couple build projects come out of it. Um, stay tuned for that. But otherwise, pick one if you're going for one and, and stick with it. Pedal number four I acquired at the same time as the Berserker Overdrive, and this is the Black Label Chorus.
I gave the past couple of pedals a little bit of benefit of the doubt. The Wild Wah pedal does sound quite a bit different from a standard Crybaby. The overdrives do sound a lot different than a Tube Screamer, probably more in line with the Boss Super, Super Overdrive. But this chorus pedal is, from what I can tell, just a reskinned MXR chorus pedal that exists. It has the exact same I.O., has the exact same controls and location of those controls, dimensions. It's just reskinned from what I can tell. And maybe there was a little bit of modification to the circuit, but to my ears, I'm not a picky guy when it comes to chorus. You either have a good chorus or a bad chorus. They're all going to sound a little bit different. Obviously, you have you know, guys like the Earthquaker device people that make just insane variations on all these modulation effects. When it comes to good old-fashioned chorus pedals, though, it is kind of hard to differentiate yourself, especially when you already have a couple products in your stack. And this isn't even exactly the same kind that Zach was using when he wasn't sponsored by MXR. I was just using stock stuff, but it does get the same job done. I think he was using a stereo chorus beforehand, but he actually puts all of his time modulation effects in front of the amp, which is not usual. Most people would take the chorus, the phasers, the flangers, all that good stuff and run it in the loop. But Zach does use those kind of effects a lot differently than most people would. Um, it's not to say that these don't sound good in the loop, but it is intended to be ran in front of an amplifier to thicken up choruses to, or to thicken up solos with the chorus to thicken up cleans, that sort of thing. For my own personal stuff, I do prefer to run this in the loop, but you don't get the same type of thick Zach Wilde solo sound unless you put it in front of the amp. So that's why we're gonna be showing that in this video. Um, in terms of IO, you have an input and output as always, but you do have a through, which is pretty cool. So you can use this to you know, split your signal and throw it into another amp if you'd like. Obviously you won't get the chorus effect on it, but if you want to you know, have a little bit of a wet, dry, wet signal setup going on, you can do that with this without needing an external switch box, which is pretty cool. The controls are fairly straightforward. You have a level rate depth and a low and high cut. And this isn't exactly how Zach would set his up, but this is the way I like it and uh, you can look on guides online for how he would do it. But it, it achieves what Zach Wilde uses his choruses for, that's to thicken up the guitar. Sometimes you will use it in like the chorus of a song or um, that sort of thing. But for the most part, this is going to just thicken up the solo to sound like multiple guitars are going on. And in the studio, is that necessary? Probably not, but it does sound like Zach Wilde when you do that. It's one of his little signature tricks. Um, and it definitely helps if you're just alone on stage by yourself, you're the only guitarist and you want a little bit more oomph in your solo, um, this is one good way to do it. So I don't use it that way for personal stuff, but whenever I play Black Label Society, it works phenomenally for that. Our last pedal of the day is also my newest addition to the collection, and that is the ZW90 Phase Pedal. Again, I'm gonna to have to give this pedal a little bit of grief for also being a reskin of an existing MXR product, times two, actually. So there's already a phaser pedal. I think it's red and it's one knob operation just like this, speed control, it's all you got on and off. Um, but then there's also an Eddie Van Halen MXR signature that is his paint scheme, you know, with the, the white black stripes, which Zach Wilde used until he got this. And from what I can tell, there ain't shit for difference between those. Again, I'm not a good resource to tell you the minute differences between phasers and courses and that sort of thing, especially between the same company. But as far as I can tell from listening to this and seeing how Zach's pedal boards evolved over the years, this is literally 
the Eddie Van Halen signature, which is probably also the, the regular MXR model with a different paint job. Not to say that's a terrible thing, and I do quite like the paint job on this, the little buzzsaw graphics on the orange on top of the brushed aluminum finish, but it is just kind of like, come on, man, really? You're gonna charge a hundred bucks for the exact same product that you probably get half off used. And again, I did buy this used at about half the cost, so it's not a big deal. Like choruses, I rarely use phasers in front of the amp, although I'm becoming a little bit more of a fan of it uh, because it does give you a kind of a wah modulation effect without having to use a wah pedal. Um, but most of the time it is in the loop for me, even though, again, I'm kind of reverting to putting it in front of the amplifier. So this does one job, and that is to thicken up solos to give that wah pedal type modulation sound without having to move a pedal. And um, you can't really control the depth, you can't really control how much it's uh, saturating your signal, you got speed, that's about it. And um, it, you know, it works, it's a good sounding phaser pedal. I don't own another standalone phase pedal and I can say with 100% certainty that this beats out any of my multi-effects unit uh, in terms of quality, obviously the Fractal AX8 notwithstanding, but um, it, it's a fine pedal, but I, I, I have a hard time justifying these kind of pedals like this the chorus flanger that I'm only be using for 20, 30 seconds per song if I use them that song. Overdrives, amps, cabinets, that sort of stuff, like you use all the time. I love that kind of stuff, but um, I, have, I have a hard time getting passionate about this sort of thing. It works, it's a good pedal, but it's definitely not at the top of my list of recommendations out of this batch of pedals. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about which ones I like the most, which ones I think are gonna be most useful to you guys. And if you're a Zach Wild fan, you're probably gonna buy them all anyway, so who cares? I'm giving the first place spots to the Wild Overdrive and the Berserker Overdrive because they're essentially the same thing. I do prefer this one a little bit just because I've had so much time with it. This is like one of the best friends on my pedal board that I grew up with. So I do love this pedal. Um, this pedal works the same way, like I said. And you can pick one of these up for about 40 to 60 bucks, like I said, is what I've seen them used. And this is about 100 brand new, but you can definitely get anywhere from half off, you know, 25% off without having to look too, too hard. So if you are an overdrive collector, you like to add a little bit of different flavor in front of your amplifiers, I would definitely recommend having one of these if you're a Zach Wild fan. Um, and even if you're not, they can definitely be useful if you're into more type of classic rock or stuff that doesn't require a razor sharp cutting guitar in the uh, vein of a lot of modern stuff. If you want that thick chunk, then this is a great way to achieve it. Coming just behind in second place would be the Wild Wah pedal, uh, partially because you don't use it all the time, but also because it is a bit more expensive. I have seen these things as low as 50 bucks in terrible condition. Um, something that even looks not as great as this, I would say you're gonna pay about 75 to 80. And it is a little bit more of a premium over a regular crybaby pedal, but to me, for what I'm going for, I love the sound of this um, for any application, and this is what a wah pedal should sound like to my ears, at least if it's coming out of uh, Dunlop. So, love this pedal. It is just, takes up a lot of room. It's heavy, it's bulky, but it's, again, one of the things that shaped my ear early on as a guitar player. So, really, really love this thing. If you don't already have a crybaby, you find a good deal on one of these, I'd spring for it. Coming in at third is the Black Label Chorus. Like I said, I don't get real excited about these sort of time-based effects because you just don't use them all the time. But when you do, this will be a very solid chorus to have if you have to pick one of them. And you're not gonna get a huge range of chorus sounds out of this. It's basically a one-trick pony that you can roll off the top or bottom, change the speed a little bit, change the depth, but for the most part, you're gonna get a couple variations of the same sound. It's a good sound though. And switching between the loop and in front of the amp will give you a couple different tones. I do like this pedal quite a bit. I've been using it about every time I play in front of a real amp, but I don't know that it's necessarily something I would cough up 60 bucks for again out of my own pocket. And um, definitely not if I hadn't gotten on free promotion probably. Um, so yeah, not to die for, but it is a really solid pedal to have if you are in need of a chorus. And rounding out the bottom is the Wild Phase. Not a bad pedal. Very solid, good construction, does one thing really well, but it does one thing. And it costs the same thing as all those other pedals that we looked at used and 100 bucks uh, normally. So I have absolutely no way I can justify 100 bucks for just a regular phase pedal. But um, again, if you're a Zach Wild fan like me and you have everything else, hey, might as well. <laughs> so it isn't a great value, but it does work and um, it looks cool. So there's at least that. So yeah. That will be 
our Zach Wild MXR slash Jim Dunlop pedal roundup. I hope you enjoyed this and maybe we'll you know do a little bit more of a casual look at some stuff like this later on if this is something you guys like to watch. Again, apologies for the huge delay between videos the past week and don't be surprised if you see something like that similar in the next couple of months. I'm going to be extremely busy again, but hopefully we'll have some more in-depth and uh, larger scale videos like this one going forward and we're definitely going to be taking a uh, look at even more pedals coming up very soon. Even more. More more there gonna be more pedals <laughs> uh so yeah hope you enjoyed that and uh we will see you next time thanks for watching bye